how's it going? A bit fresh this morning, but at least there's no fog. Which is a bit of a bugger, because um, I should probably be down on the red deer. But nonetheless, we've got the, um, that bull tar up there. And um, only about an hour ago, I heard one cutting along the scree slope down here. And a bit before that was another one, I reckon, cutting through the same scree slope that bull was on, so... There's a few around, it'll be just hard to pick them up in the tussock until we get a bit more light. So just having a cup of tea and sort of waiting for that and then um, get into it. Then I've got the recovery of me bull, so pretty keen. See you then. Bloody spill and I've got a deer out down there, but I can't, um, this camera just won't pick it up. It's just a hind. But um, it's pretty cool because I wouldn't have thought there'd be one on that face. So yeah, it's a bugger that me camera's up on that screech slope. <laughs> but um, that's, that's what happens, I suppose. It's one that's not a stag. No, me camera's up there. This girl is on a mission. She's been down the bottom. And she's all the way out there. So yeah, pretty spewing. I've left me good camera up there. I don't, don't think I'll ever leave it in the um, bush again. I'll make the effort to go back and get it. Pretty thankful that it's not dewy and foggy dewy and foggy this morning so the camera's likely still in good condition typically you do leave it in the bush and then there is um, deer within good filming distance she's up there but she's just bedding, getting up into the sun now so it's kind of fucking cool I was hoping she was going to be a big stag but not to be so anyway I'll get my eyes back on this thing and just see what she does for a while Not sure if she's going to bed there or what, but um, she's cleared right out of this face. Well, what have I found? There's my camera. And that big rock's where I shot from. And there was the stuff in there. Happy to found the camera. And a pair of gloves. There's me ball. There's me camp. I set that up after the hunt and this is the area that I'm in pretty awesome
All right. Pretty wrapped. This is um, yesterday's bull. Shot him last Arvo, just on last light. Uh, about 160 meters shot with the uh, old Mossberg 270. Uh, he's got, it's probably a PB for me. He's got um, some really nice horns on him. I'm pretty wrapped. It was just a good way to top off yesterday after um, pulling out of this hunt a couple of days ago because of the bad weather coming and just the fog. I decided to um, run in town and do a few errands, run a few errands and whatnot, and then head back up here. We're getting close to the red deer roar, so I was hoping to actually run into more red deer. But I thought after yesterday morning, it was foggy, I thought I'm gonna try and make the mission up here to hunt this tar that I seen previously in the afternoon while I could. Um, so I made a bit of a gut buster effort to get across here, um, sidling across a lot of scree slope and my feet were just ready to walk off me. I was pretty over it. But um, I got into position and um, I thought I'd find a spot to camp up on a high little knob. And anyway, it wasn't too long and I glassed this bugger feeding in here. Um, he was by himself, whereas last time there was four or five different, um, there was two mobs with four or five tar in them. Just this guy was around. So um, I made a pretty quick dash across the open, open stuff and got up into the scree and um, I lost light pretty quickly, so I wasn't able to get the camera really onto him too much or film the shot, which I was pretty spewing about. If he had walked on the other side across the screen and fed, it would have been um, would have been a bit of a show. But nonetheless, I um, sh put the first shot straight over his back, which is pretty standard, and um, collected him with the second one in the sweet spot. I'm going to guess him at around 11 inches, me 11 and a half, but. He's actually, check up there. Regardless, um, yeah, he's, he's just a good, good bull. I'm bloody stoked on the size of his horns. Looks like about an eight year old, going off his growth rings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight. Eight year old, which is pretty cool. I'm pretty wrapped on eight year old bull. He's got a beautiful winter coat and he's in some really beautiful country up here. Um, it's one of these spots I've been looking at for a long time, um, just glassing and seeing quite a few tar on this other side. Um, there's been a couple of tar consistently out on these grass patches behind me. Um, and yesterday there was only a nanny and a, tar, uh, nanny and a kid. But yeah, pretty stoked, absolutely wrapped to nail this, this tar. Um, he's going to look good on the wall. I won't be shoulder mounting him, I'll be just um, European mounting him. That's sort of my deal. But anyway, his blowies are coming in, so I'm going to get back straps out of him and take his head off and uh, head back down to my camp, which you can't quite see from here, but it's just down the end of the valley. Anyway, it's me probably signing out for a little while. Uh, I've got a few priorities. I've got to take care of back home and um, I'm going to go back head, head down the valley and chase a few uh, red deer for the last few days but anyway stay tuned I'll see you on the next one cheers for following and um, appreciate all the patrons Smashes the OB, you've got to make sure you keep that hydration in here. Seems to be quite a few streams everywhere, but sometimes you get unlucky and come up in here and there's no streams. So just filling up so you head back to camp and keep the cup is boiling. And um, decide what happens to the Arvo.